Hi, welcome back to New Music 2023. Yeah. 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 We're back. This is January and February at the same time. Ooh, I've got to do this very quick because I have two days left of my Adobe subscription. They tried to fleece me out of 30 quid. Disgusting. Well, actually, maybe I'll fleece them. I think I did, actually. Yeah, if I, God. Don't let this get out. Right, they'll be tracking me down. They're here, great. I listened to three albums in January. Bit embarrassing, but I picked it up in Feb and we have 12 albums to talk about today. How many do I normally talk about? It's about it's around 12, isn't it? Oh well, I plan on this being a very quick and easy video. Gigi's Recovery by The Murder Capital. Yeah, it weren't for me. Nothing really caught my interest and like the vocals just weren't for me and nothing that interesting going on in the instrumental. Sorry, I didn't like it, didn't like it. Like by Ice Spice. Don't get me wrong, I am still a munchkin. <laughs> this EP isn't that great. Yeah, the uh, uh, songs are fun. That boy's a liar. He said I'm good enough, grandma did it. Think about shit that I shouldn't. Uh, it's, it's fucking fun, but you, you wouldn't catch me playing Bikini Bottom unironically. <laughs> Next, Cracker Island by Gorillaz. <laughs> I like the title track. <laughs> yeah, I like when Damon Albarn just like kind of. I didn't know, like, like he probably like Britishes it up, you know. I like that. Didn't really like the rest of the album. I liked the track with Tame Impala. I thought that one was quite fun. And also the track Silent Running. I enjoyed that. But the rest, all a bit bland. But I am glad they're at least changing their sound up rather than just pumping out the same old shit. At least they're giving it a go. You know, they could they could release Feel Good Inc. 500 million times and it'd probably do well. But they're giving it a go and ain't really working. But they're giving it a go and that's what matters. Not how good the music is. Giving it a go is what really matters, and you can just tell this wasn't going to be very good. Like, look at the look at the album cover. That's just like not a classic, right? Good albums have good album covers most of the time, and this album covers fucking shit. Arrgh! Five easy hot dogs by Mac DeMarco. Oh, you're so quirky, Mac DeMarco. Five easy hot dogs. I think this is a really like fun and easy listening instrumental album. Nothing crazy is going on throughout this album, but that's it's just great to like chuck on in the background and that's what this is unfortunately, it's background music. Yeah, let's leave it at that. I enjoyed it. This is why by Paramore. For what it is, this album is amazing. I think it had a plan on being a fun comeback album for Paramore and it does that brilliantly. The title track is by far the best track, it's so catchy and fun. This is why I don't leave the house, you say the coast is clear but you're going to away. This is why. Yep, that's fun. Uh, Hayley Williams' vocals are brilliant, of course, and although it gives me major Disney Channel vibes, I really like the track C'est comme ça. C'est comme ça, c'est comme ça, na 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 na, c'est comme ça. Uh, figure eight. The track figure eight is also worth a listen. So is the whole bloody album. Go on, go on, get out of here. Go listen to it. Desire. Uh, 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 I wanna turn into you. By Caroline Polacek. Is this album overhyped or am I going crazy? <laughs> I I'm just not loving it as much as everyone else. Not to say it's bad, but comparing it to Pang. Her 2018 album, 2019, 2018, don't matter. This pales in comparison. Pang, I think, is a is a wonderful, beautiful album. But desire, when I turn into you, 
I think it's just, it's a bit nothing compared to it. So I feel like it is being slightly overhyped, or maybe I'm just in a Caroline Polacek crazy sphere. Either way, it's good, but not as good as I thought it'd be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not normally a metal fan, but this album's reputation... Everyone likes this album, so I listen to it. This is a really accessible metal album, in my opinion, which I really appreciate. Not leaning too heavily into the growling and animal noises, which, you know, to each their own, but I can't... I can't... I can't vibe with. But a massive highlight for me in this album is the track Why, which poses the question, why do people have to live outside, which is quite an infantile question at first, but, and you shrug it off and just say, uh, that's the way things are, as if a child had asked that question, you know? You know, it's just the way things are. But the front man repeats the question first in a confused tone that grows into a desperate pleading. It does such a good job at making you so pissed off at the question itself, because why do people have to live outside? It's a very simple question with a very simple solution, and it's not happening. Grr. And it's really effective about making you think of the problem at hand. So, well done, chat pile. That is a very effective song, and I like it. I also like this album. Listen to it. Again, maybe I'm in biased spaces, but I don't quite like this album as much as everyone else does. It's, it's really good. I like it. I don't quite like it as much as everyone else does. I'd say it's a bit tad. I'd say it's a tad disappointing based on the hype. It came out this weekend, didn't it? I've gave it four days and it's overhyped and it's shit and I hate it. To me, Shame was a bit of a nothing band. You know, they'd release their album, they'd get a catchy sh sh a catchy song. Yeah, but they'd release an album, one catchy song, and then you'd forget about them. They'd fade into obscurity. But gladly, this is a lot better than their previous record, Drunk Tank Pink, which I think was... <laughs> this album has a very clear musical palette in how everything sounds, and it brings a nice cohesiveness to the album. The album for me definitely peaks in the second half with some of my standout tracks being Orchid, Burning by Design, and Different Person. <laughs> Blue Rev by Always, Always, Always. Who gives a shit? This album is a great breath of fresh air. <sighs> this album is really digestible at 14 tracks and 39 minutes, which only limits the tracks to being around 3 minutes each, which is good, in my opinion. I think the less long songs, the better, because long songs are they're tricky because they need to earn their longness. And when a long song is bad, fuck me. Oh, fuck me, you son. Oh, when a long song's bad. Oh, when a long song's bad. I think this is a perfect introduction to a more shoegaze sound, as it kind of mixes shoegaze elements with indie pop and indie rock sound. If you're looking to get into that, I say start with this album, maybe. I'm not a shoegaze expert, but start with this one, maybe. One problem for me with this album, the vocals. For me, they're really inconsistent throughout the record, and they average out at around mediocre. There's some points in this album where I'd even say the vocals are bad. I really do see the vision with this album, though, and the vocals for me aren't that much of a stumbling block, and maybe I just need to get used to them. I just listened to this album, like, an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> This album's really hard to describe and to pinpoint. And I'm I'm actually really bad at critiquing rap albums, other than like the beat's good. And I like the raps. This album's really good and the beats are fun and weird and spooky at some points. Yeah, I don't really know how to compliment it. Sorry, sorry, sorry! It's only like 38, 40 minutes. It's it's a 40 minute album, you should listen to it. <laughs> Probably one of the craziest 180s a rapper has ever done. Yeah, probably the craziest 180 a rapper has done in recent memory. Lil Yachty goes full psych rock on this album, and I cannot applaud him enough for it. Hello. Clear influences from Pink Floyd and Tame Impala are given its own twist by Lil Yachty's unique vocal delivery, which is not always good, but it's good in its own way. I'll tell. I'll say. I'll say that. All right. He's not a very good singer. 
but it don't really matter, you know? Like, there's an art to bad singing, and I think Little Yachty's getting the bloody hang of it. There are some crazy instrumental moments on this album, mainly from huge distorted synths, and they just sound crazy and grandiose. It's oh, I love it. I love it. I love when like you just feel swallowed by the music, and I like getting swallowed, I'll tell you now. <laughs> Cheat Codes by Danger Mouse, Squeak Squeak, and Black Thought. Mm. Everyone is sleeping so hard on Black Thought. I'd go as far to say he's one of the best rappers around right now. As I said before, I find it really hard to critique rap albums. This feels like a more modern version than Atheops by Billy Woods, the album I just talked about. You know what, I said what I said, deal with it, I ain't got to justify it to you. Yeah, some of the beats on here are fucking crazy, and some of the features, the features are so good, especially on the track Strangers, featuring ASAP Rocky and Run The Jewels. When I hear LP and Killer Mike come on a track, oh, it's, it's over, it's over. This is a must listen for all rap fans, there isn't a single skip on this album. Yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for joining me in the new year, baby. And, uh, I don't know. I'll keep doing my thing, you keep doing yours. Subscribe to the channel, please. Also, like the video or comment. Okay, right, right, right. If you got this far in the video, comment down below. Aw, oh, Joe, your dog is so cute. Also, and then that's it. Okay, bye. Swimming in my new fins, doors open up like two fins, new whips on Dr. Seuss's, one fish, two fish, red whip, blue whip. This motherfucker does not give a fuck about you. He is in his 